Father, we bless your name as we go into your word this day. Send forth your word. Bless the hearts of all your children. Let it draw their hearts nearer to God. Let it save the lost. Let it deliver the oppressed. Let it heal the sick. Let your word this day make these single people, young people, great youths and singles for the glory of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. The subject of this message is Samson and Delilah. The purpose of looking at the life of Samson and the story, the biblical account of Samson and Delilah, is to teach every one of you as young people to flee from sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is a major bane among young people, among single people. And not only among young people, sexual immorality is a major bane among the race of Adam cutting across a lot of age groups. And as a young person, you will do well to put yourself in a position of advantage by overcoming or learning to overcome the troubles, the temptations of sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is not a small sin. The kind of punishment it attracts under the old covenant as seen in the Bible gives a reflection of the gravity of the sin. Under the law of Moses, sexual immorality was punishable by death penalty. God, the living God, your father and my father, hates sexual immorality so greatly. It is an abomination before God, and God has no tolerance for it at all. The tolerance of the kingdom of of God or the economy of God for sexual immorality is zero tolerance. No tolerance at all. God cannot stand it. If you are a child of God, if you are a man of God or a woman of God, a young man, a young lady who claims to know the living God, God wants you to abstain, to flee from sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is a destroyer, is a killer. It can destroy your body with sexually transmitted diseases. And it can destroy your life, taking away your God-given glory and stripping you naked. It is a regular trick of Satan to use sexual immorality traps to rob people of their God-given glory. Financially, materially, and spiritually. The Bible is absolutely accurate to have warned us to flee from sexual immorality. The tendency of young people today is a tendency towards free sex. A lot of young people believe they are free to have sex with anyone, anywhere, anytime, provided the other person gives his or her consent. But let it be clear to you that there is no such thing. The Bible does not agree with that. You are not free to have sex with anyone, anywhere, anytime, despite their consent. The scripture forbids it. You are only free, if you are of age, to have sex with your wedded wife or husband. Sex outside marriage is forbidden. God is the author of sex, but he created it to operate within the marital union. 
the consent of your sex partner does not make it right if the two of you are not married to each other. Even if the other person, he or she, was the one begging you to do it and you really claim that you never wanted to do it, but once you do it, you are guilty before God. And the punishment for sexual immorality, sex outside the marital union, is to be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. The lake of fire is a very bad place, and no reasonable person should want to go there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and begin to read from verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have judged already as though I were present, concerning him that had so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Here we see the Apostle Paul declared a verdict of death punishment for a sexually moral person when he says to deliver the person to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that is death sentence. When the flesh is destroyed, the body dies. Some Bible versions try to water this down, but however, the meaning is very clear. When the flesh is destroyed, the body dies. That's death penalty. The word destruction is from Greek transliteration, olithros, which means to destroy, which also means death punishment or destruction. The phrase of the flesh is from the Greek transliteration, sax, which refers to the meat of an animal. It refers to the body as opposed to the soul or spirit. That's why you see the apostle, after saying the body be destroyed, then he mentioned the soul, that the soul may be saved. And the word there is made, that's based or depending on whether the person repents in his satanic affliction or not. If he repents when he's afflicted by Satan, the soul will be saved, but he will still die physically. But he will no longer die spiritually because he has repented in the time of his affliction. All I'm trying to bring out here is to let you see how much God hates sexual immorality to the extent of giving it death penalty as punishment. Under the old covenant, it was so. But this is the New Testament. You can see that it is still so. If you permit sexual immorality in your life, it's going to cut short your life. It is hard, very hard, for a sexually immoral person to live out his God-given lifespan. Very hard. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. 
First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the loss of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. The Bible makes it very clear here that the will of God for you is sanctification. Is for you to abstain from fornication, from sexual immorality. Verse 4 says, God wants you to maintain consistently a control over your body. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. The vessel there is referring to your body. That you don't allow sex drive to push your body to do evil. To begin to have sex anywhere, anyhow. That's contrary to the will of God. You are not to do as you feel. You are to do as the word of God commands. Let's read further. Let's read verses 6 and 7. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified. He's still talking here about sexual immorality. And he's saying you should not defraud your brother. In other words, don't cheat your brother by sleeping with his wife and he says if you do so the law will punish you that's why he says the lord is the avenger of all such and he says you are forewarned to be forewarned is to be forearmed you lose control of your body and sleep with another man's wife or another woman's husband or a free girl who is not married to anyone, that free girl is going to be a man's wife one day. And that free man you're talking about is going to be a woman's husband one day. If you sleep with them, you have sex with them without being married to them, you are defrauding the rightful partner. And God will punish you for it. It's a great sin against God. All who do this will have no part in the inheritance of the living God. They will have no part in the kingdom of the Most High God. Verse 7. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. God has called us to holiness. God has called you to be a holy person, not an unholy person. It's possible for young people to be holy. It's not only old people. It's possible for young people to maintain a control over their sex organs. It can be done. It's doable with the help of the Holy Spirit. But you must be born again first. And when you are born again, the Holy Ghost is going to empower you to separate yourself from fornication, from every iniquity. That was the problem of Samson, whom God gave a very great anointing, great future. But because he lacked self-control, he failed to maintain control over his body, over his sex organ, and he ruined his future, absolutely. We are still going to the story of Samson, but we are first of all trying to lay a scriptural foundation. I want to read these verses in the NLT to make some of the verses there clearer. God's will is for you to be holy, to stay away from all sexual sin. 
with emphasis on all sexual sin, whether it's fornication, whether it's bestiality, having sex with an animal. Somebody said he had sex with his dog. Then you have become a dog. You are having sex with an animal. You are guilty before God. God forbids it. That's what's called bestiality. You have sex with an animal, you are going to go to hell for it. You may claim you bought the animal with your money. Yes, but it's a sin against God. A horrible sin against God. Some have sex with their dogs or their horses, and they are so shameless, so corrupt in the mind as to even write it down. People like this are on the way to hell, but there is chance for you to repent if you are hearing my voice and you have done that, God wants you to repent. Some have sex with people of same sex. I mean, it's female to female. That's called lesbianism. Or male to male. That's called sodomy. Both called homosexuality. All who commit these sins will never have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. All will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's the emphasis this version is laying. So stay away from all sexual sin. Verse 4. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you before. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Hallelujah. That's very clear. That's very clear. If you know you want to inherit the kingdom of God, you must flee from every manner of sexual immorality. If you don't, it will rob you of your destiny in this world and in the world to come. Somebody says to avoid committing fornication with any girl. That's why he goes to a harlot. What are you saying? When you go to a harlot, that's still fornication because... You are not married to that harlot. Though you pay, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't reduce the gravity of the sin. It's the same. Perhaps it's even worse. Because you are trying to legalize illegality. And you are encouraging the harlot to continue in the evil she is doing. So your sin is greater. God is against harlotry. God is against prostitution. It is wrong for any person to be a prostitute. It's a sin against God. God doesn't want prostitutes in the streets or anywhere, in any brother. God wants all prostitutes to repent from sexual immorality and give their lives to Christ. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 19. Verse 29, in the NLT, Do not defile your daughter by making her a prostitute, or the land will be filled with prostitution and wickedness. Prostitution is forbidden. Let's see Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 17 and 18. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the prize of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abominations unto the Lord thy God. God says, Nobody among his people is allowed to be a prostitute, whether male or female. And any earning you earn from prostitution is 
equally an abomination should not be brought into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read those same verses in the New Century Version. No Israelite, man or woman, must ever become a temple prostitute. You know, some pagan temples are prostitutes. No Israelite, man or woman, must ever become a temple prostitute. Do not bring a male or female prostitute pay to the temple of the Lord your God to pay what you have promised to the Lord because the Lord your God hates prostitution. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 16 to 19. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two said he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Verse 18. Flee fornication. Flee fornication. Everything that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Hallelujah. That's another very clear warning that God does not want you to commit any manner, any kind of sexual immorality. They are all forbidden. God wants you to keep yourself clean and pure so that you can receive the blessings that God has for you in this world and in the world to come. In the world to come, that is, so you can inherit the kingdom of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Verse 18 says, flee fornication. That means run away from it. A woman is trying to tempt you. A lady, a girl is tempting you. Run away. The Bible says flee. To flee means to run away as in terror. Don't play around it. Flee. Run away quickly. Because it will destroy you in this world and in the world to come. It will rob you of your God-given destiny. Your God-given inheritance in this world and in the world to come. Your body is created to be the temple of the Holy Ghost and is not to be used for immoral things like fornication or any such thing. And your body is not your own. It's God's temple. It's, it has been bought with a price. So you have to please God with what you do about your body. You can't just say, it's my body, I can do what I like. No. Look at verse 19 again. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. I mean, you don't own yourself. Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. You have been bought with a price. Jesus paid the price of your redemption. He paid the price to redeem you, to wash away your iniquities. He shed his blood. That was a great price. So don't, don't joke with that. You have to honor that and honor God by separating yourself, your body, which is God's temple, from every form, every manner, of iniquity. Hallelujah. This was what Samson failed to do. He failed to honor God. He failed to honor God by separating himself from iniquity. He failed to exercise self-control 
and he lost his inheritance in God, in this world and in the world to come. He died prematurely. He was not able to use out the lifespan God gave to him on the earth. He died as a youth. That's not the will of God for you. Those are the troubles, sexual immorality you bring into your life when you go along the way of sexual immorality. Now let's go to Judges chapter 13. Let's begin to look at the life story of Samson. Judges chapter 13. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. You see, when you do evil, you bring the judgment of God upon your life. You want to have the blessings of God upon your life. Obey the word of God. Quit doing evil. That's the answer. Verse 2. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine or strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, Thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So Samson was born as a child God-given child, God-given son, with a God-given assignment. He was born with a great purpose, a great destiny ahead of him. With great anointing too, great presence of God. But he lost everything because of sexual immorality. And the same thing is still applicable today. Sexual immorality will rob you of the blessings that God intends for your life in this world and in the world to come. Samson was born according to prophecy, according to the promise of God. He was a promised child. He was given the power of the Holy Ghost. He carried the power of the Holy Ghost in him right from his mother's womb. He began to carry God's anointing from his mother's womb. What can be greater? And yet, because of fornication, he lost everything and died before his time. He lost all the glory he was supposed to walk in. He aborted his destiny because of sexual immorality, because he lacked self-control. God will tell you his will, but he will not force you to do it. God does not force anybody to obey him or to serve him. God will be served and obeyed only volitionally, not by duress, not by compulsion, not by force. God doesn't do anything like that. Somebody said God forced him to be a preacher. No. Not the living God that I know. God does not force any man to do anything. Even Paul the Apostle was not forced to be a preacher. God confronted him. And he gave him a call. But he did not force him to accept and obey the call. He did that in his own volition. Because he didn't know Christ. Christ revealed himself to him 
Paul the apostle, formerly called Saul, was a man who was zealous for God, but his zeal was misdirected, was hijacked by Satan, was operating in ignorance, and he thought he was serving God. And Jesus needed to reveal himself to him. And when he saw the revelation, he knew what to do. He knew what to do. He surrendered to Christ. He did it in his own volition, not under duress. God will not force anybody to serve him. Who are you that God will force you to serve him? There is nobody that God cannot do without. Can do without you and create 10,000 millions of your kind no matter how blessed you are god can do without you and make million others better than you verse 6 we are still in judges chapter 13 then the woman came and told her husband saying a man of god came unto me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of god very terrible but I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God, from the womb to the day of his death. The Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God, which thou send, come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. Look at that. God is a prayer answering God. But Manoah and his wife must have separated themselves unto God. That was why God hearkened to them. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran. And showed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man has appeared unto me, that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Are thou the man that speakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? That was a man who wants to be careful to do the will of God. No wonder God had his prayer. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, Neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee, until we have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy saints come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is sacred? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. 
And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would as at this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare his son, and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Zorah and Eshtel. Hallelujah. That was the birth, the beginning, the glorious beginning of the life of Samson. Chapter 14. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And... Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Hallelujah. That was a great anointing. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. He tore a lion in pieces. Using his bare hands, no weapon, no tool, no instrument of any kind in his hands. Just his bare hands. That was very, very supernatural. That was a kind of great anointing that was upon the life of this man, Samson. But he ruined everything by sexual immorality. Verse 7. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. And came to his father and mother, and he gave them. 
and they did eat. But he told them not that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast. So, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass, when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty changes of raiment. But if ye cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth the riddle, that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day, that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou has put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and has not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father, nor my mother. And shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him, And she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him, On the seventh day, before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. Verse 19, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and slew thirty men, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Hallelujah. Chapter 15 But it came to pass within a while after in the time of which harvest that Samson visited his wife with a kid and said I will go in to my wife into the chamber but her father will not suffer him to go in. And her father said I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her. Therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and took firebrands, and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails and when he had set the brands on fire he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up both the shocks and also the standing corn 
with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? And they answered Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you. And after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Etam. Look at the great anointing that was operating in his life. He smote them with a great slaughter. No man could stand before him. And after the great slaughter, he went to the top of the rock Etam. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they answered, To bind Samson, uh, we come up to do to him as he has done to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etam and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that thou wilt not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock and when he came into Lehi the Philistines shouted against him and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands loosed from off his hands hallelujah such was the great anointing and power of the Holy Ghost that was operating in the life of Samson. We are going through this reading step by step so that you can see how great the power and glory of God was in his life. Verse 15, And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. Look at that. He killed a thousand men just with the jawbone of an ass. That was miraculous. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. Hallelujah. Verse 17, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called the place Ramath Lehi. And he was so atthast, and called on the Lord, and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst? And fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. Verse 19. But God clave an hollow place that was in the jaw. And there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. And he revived. Wherefore he called the name 
thereof and Hakore, which is in Lehi, unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years. For the purpose of clarity, I want to read verses 18 and 19 in the NCV. Samson was very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord, You gave me your servant this great victory. Do I have to die of thirst now? Do I have to be captured by people who are not circumcised? Then God opened up a hole in the ground at Lehi, and water came out. When Samson drank, he felt better. He felt strong again. So he named that spring Kola Spring, which is still in Lehi. Hallelujah. That was another instance again in which God had his prayer very easily. He didn't have to pray for a long time. He only called and God answered immediately. That shows that the presence of God was upon his life. The mighty anointing of God was upon his life. He started right. He started well. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. He was moving in the presence of God. He had the favor of God, but he lacked self-control and ruined everything because of sexual immorality. That's the pitfall, the ruination that I'm warning you to avoid. No matter how talented you are, no matter how great the blessings of God you carry upon your life, if you lack self-control and you allow your body to push you into sexual immorality, you will lose everything God has given you. You will lose your inheritance and your destiny in this world and in the world to come. This is avoidable. How? By repentance. Repent from your iniquities. Surrender your heart to Jesus and let the Spirit of the Lord bless your heart. And give you self-control. Give you victory over lust of the flesh. Over lust of the eyes. And over the pride of life. Over every iniquity. Hallelujah. Now let's go to chapter 16. Then went Samson to Gaza. And saw there an harlot. And went in unto her. That's the free sex I was talking about. She gave her consent. He loves me. No matter how greatly you think a woman or a man loves you, having sex with such a person without, first of all, getting married, without any contract of marriage, is a great sin against God. Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. Verse 2. And it was told the Gaza, it saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night at the gate of the city. And were quiet all the night, saying in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. But Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and pulled them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. Such was the great power upon the life of this young man. Can you imagine the gate of a city? Can you imagine how great the pillars shall be? Very mighty pillars. He uprooted everything. The gate was meant to be a protection. It had been securely put in place. 
as a defense. But this man was so blessed, this man Samson was so blessed with the power of God that he uprooted everything just like they were nothing and carried everything on his shoulder as if it was a piece of paper and walked a long distance away just to punish them. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. When you have been committing sin again and again, a day will come when the sin will kill you. That was what happened to Samson. He went to Gaza and slept with a harlot. He escaped death there, but he was already dying. And he went further now. He found Delilah who will be his ruination in the valley of Sorek. That's how the devil destroys people. You have been committing sin and you have been escaping death. And the devil keeps telling you, just do it again. You know we are in the time of grace. You know the mercy of God, we cover it. Don't abuse the grace of God. Don't abuse the mercy of God. The devil is fooling you. You can do just this one, and after that you will repent. That may be where you will die, and die and go to hell. Samson never thought his immorality with Delilah would cost him his life. He never thought so. If he knew, he would have gone away from the woman. He wouldn't have gone there. The earlier you repent from your iniquities, the better. Don't play with sin. Repent now. Don't play with sin. Hallelujah. Repent before it destroys you. Hallelujah. Let's go on with the reading. Verse 4 again. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him. And see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. This time they have learned their lessons. They didn't make the mistake of going to lie in wait for him again, because they knew it would not work. They have now recognized that there was a great power that they could not resist operating in the life of Samson. And when you are a child of God, that's the way you are in the eyes of demons. They know there is an anointing upon your life that they cannot withstand. They cannot stand before it. And all they try to do is to make you lose that power. That was the trick they played for. They used for Samson here. The way those Philistines saw Samson, someone to be avoided, someone carrying dangerous power. That's the way demons see you as a true child of God. They know there is a power in your life they cannot withstand. They cannot overcome it. They cannot even stand before it. They cannot resist it. It compels them to bow. It breaks them in pieces. And all the trick they can play is to make you lose that power. To check your life and look for your weaknesses. And try to see what traps they can set for you. To make you sin against God, the source of your power. And to lose the great anointing of God. But I pray that that will not happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Something was not designing. He fell into the snare of the wicked, and he perished. I pray that that will not be your portion. But for that to be so, you must repent now and receive the Holy Ghost into your life. Let's take a little break here. Let's stand up. Let's talk to God concerning the words that we have had so far. Let's speak to the Lord. Let's ask for his help in our spiritual lives.
Let's ask for the presence of his spirit. If you are not born again, this is the time to tell the Lord, Lord, I surrender my heart to you. I choose to be born again. I choose to turn away from all my iniquities. Hallelujah. 